There was a time when a locked door was enough to discourage an impulsive thief. It was never enough of a deterrent, however, to ward off the professional thief. Except for the decal on the rear door window, this car does not appear to be different. But there is a difference, a great difference. This car is equipped with a new electronic security alarm system. The system has a solid state electronic device which is programmed to sense the forced entry of any door, hood, trunk, tailgate or ignition lock and respond by triggering the alarm system. When the alarm is triggered, the horn begins blowing and the headlights, side marker lights and tail lights begin flashing on and off. It is not likely that anyone will drive away in a car with all the lights flashing and the horn blowing without being noticed. At first glance, the electronic security alarm system would appear to be quite complicated. Actually, it's not. It's made up of four interrelated circuits which send or receive information to or from the electronic control unit. These circuits are the arming circuit, the locking circuit, triggering circuit, and the alarm circuit. Notice that each circuit originates from the electronic control unit. Think of the electronic control unit as the brain of the system, like a message center. It receives information and channels it to the proper circuit. Let's take a look at the arming circuit first. Here's the situation. This young lady has just parked her car and is on her way to do some shopping. She closes the front door, puts the key into the lock, and turns it to the lock position. The security alarm system is now armed. Here's what happened. When the key was inserted into the lock and turned to the lock position, it started a chain reaction. The arming switch is mounted on the back of the door lock cylinder. When the key is turned all the way to the lock position, it closes the arming switch and completes a circuit back to the electronic control unit. The electronic control unit receives the signal and alerts the locking circuit and the triggering circuit. Before we get into the locking circuit and the triggering circuit, Let's pause for a commercial and look at which options are required with the electronic security alarm system. Electric door locks are required on all passenger car and station wagon models. On station wagon models, auto lock is a required option. The electric deck lid release on passenger car models is optional but not required. And now, back to the movie. As you'll recall, the electronic control unit receives the signal from the arming circuit and alerts the locking circuit and the triggering circuit. Some cars are equipped with an electric hood release blocker, so when the locking circuit receives the signal, electricity is directed to the hood release blocker solenoid. The solenoid moves the blocker into position, which prevents the hood from being opened. The hood release handle inside the car will not open the hood when the blocker is in place. The electric door lock solenoids are also energized, and the front and rear doors lock automatically. On station wagon models, the auto-lock tailgate solenoid is energized and the button is pulled down to lock the tailgate to complete the locking phase. When the triggering circuit is energized, electric current is directed to the triggering switches in the system. The triggering switches are the spring-loaded plunger type, just like the ones used for dome light switches. When the plunger is all the way out, the plunger makes contact with the body of the switch and electric current passes through the switch to ground. When the plunger is pushed down, the contact is broken and the flow of electric current stops. One of the switches is located under the hood. If the hood is ajar, the switch closes and signals the electronic control unit. The triggering switches in the front and rear door jams double as the on-off switches for the dome and courtesy lights. The deck lid or tailgate switch is used only for the alarm system. When the electronic security alarm system is armed, the hood ajar switch, door jam switches, and trunk switch are used to trigger the system. The electronic control unit sends electric current to the switches. For instance, when the front door is closed, the plunger on the driver's door jam switch is pushed in. The ground contact is broken, so the flow of electricity stops at that point. When the door is opened with the system armed, the switch plunger moves out, and the contact on the rear of the plunger makes contact with the main body of the switch. This lets the current flow through the electronic control unit and to ground at the switch. The electronic control unit senses the completed circuit and turns on the alarm. The horn begins blowing on and off and the headlights, side marker lights and tail lights begin flashing on and off approximately 90 times per minute. There are two ways to stop the alarm system once it has been activated. One way is to insert the key into the door lock and turn it all the way to the unlock position. This will break the electrical contact and signal the electronic control unit to turn off the alarm. 
Another way is to leave the alarm going until the battery runs down if one of the doors is left open. More about that later. There are two more triggering switches you should know about. One is located inside the car and is labeled lock alarm. The lock alarm is also known as the panic switch. If the driver senses danger, all she has to do is push the lock alarm button to discourage intruders from getting into the car. Two things happen. First, the locking circuit is energized and the hood release blocker moves into place and all the doors automatically lock. Second, the alarm goes into action. The horn blows and the lights begin to flash. When the lock alarm is activated, the alarm system will operate for approximately three minutes. Then the alarm will turn itself off. If necessary, the lock alarm button can be pushed again to restart the alarm. The alarm can also be disarmed before the end of the three minute cycle by putting the key into the door lock and turning it to the unlock position. The other triggering switch is part of the ignition circuit. If someone should get into the car without triggering the switch in the door jam, such as breaking the window and crawling into the car without opening the door, and manage to force the ignition lock, the alarm will go on when they turn the ignition switch on and stay on until the system is disarmed with the front door key or until the battery runs down. Okay, let's say the alarm was on long enough to run the battery down. The alarm system is still armed, so the hood cannot be opened because the solenoid hood blocker is still in place. Putting the key into the lock and turning the key to the unlock position will put the system into the disarm phase and mechanically unlock the door. Then, with a separate power source, such as a fully charged battery, the negative lead is connected to a convenient ground. The positive lead from battery is connected to a screwdriver and touched to the terminal on the fuse block marked BAT. This will put electric power into the system and the hood blocker solenoid will move the blocking gate out of the way so the hood latch will operate manually. With the hood open, the car can be started with a fully charged battery. A word of caution. No attempt should be made to start the car by applying power directly to the fuse block. Let's go backwards for a moment. Earlier, we said the alarm system is put into the arming phase by inserting the key into the lock and turning it to the lock position. And when the system is armed, the hood, doors, ignition switch, or trunk cannot be forcibly opened without triggering the alarm. This is true. On passenger car models, the trunk can be opened with the key without setting off the alarm. When the trunk lock is opened with the key, the latch contacts a micro switch and temporarily bypasses the trunk triggering switch. When the trunk is closed again, the triggering switch is energized. A micro switch is mounted near the trunk latch. When the latch is locked, it does not contact the micro switch. On station wagon models, the procedure for getting into the tailgate is a little different than it is for getting into the trunk of a passenger car. The wagon models do not have a triggering switch bypass switch built into the lock. The alarm system must be disarmed at one of the front doors or the alarm will sound if the tailgate is unlocked. When the tailgate is closed, the alarm system must be armed again by inserting the key into either of the front doors and turning it to the lock position. Well, basically, that's what the electronic security alarm system is all about. The electronic control unit is the brain of the system. It receives and sends signals to and from the arming, locking, triggering, and alarm circuits. The system is armed and disarmed by turning the key in either of the front door locks and can be temporarily bypassed by opening the trunk with a key. When the system is armed, the hood blocker moves into place to prevent the hood from being opened, and all the doors and tailgate on station wagon models lock automatically. Incidentally, the arming phase is not complete until all the triggering switches have been depressed. Here we see our heroine getting out of the car. Notice the trunk lid is open. She locks the door and moves to the rear of the car. As she closes the trunk lid, the arming circuit is completed. Now, if the hood, trunk, or one of the doors is forced, the alarm will go off. The triggering circuit signals the electronic control unit if any of the triggering switches were closed while the system was armed. The electronic control unit senses the completed circuit and turns on the alarm. 
The horn begins blowing on and off, and the headlights, side marker lights, and tail lights begin flashing on and off. Remember also, the lock alarm button in the passenger compartment will activate the alarm system for a three-minute cycle. Here are a couple of things to think about. If the headlights are on when the lock alarm button is pushed, the headlights, side marker lights, and tail lights will not flash on and off. They will remain on during the three-minute cycle because the headlight circuit overrides the alarm flasher. If the driver pushes in the headlight switch to turn the headlights off, the main headlight circuit power is turned off and the alarm flasher takes over again. So the lights begin flashing on and off again. See the reference book for a more complete explanation. Another point to remember is, when the lock alarm button is pushed and the door lock buttons are pulled down to lock the doors, the doors remain locked after the alarm has completed the three minute cycle. The doors do not unlock automatically. And on a final note, the electronic security alarm system can only be disarmed by putting the key into the door lock and turning the key to the unlock position. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for your attention. Oh, by the way, for additional information about the security alarm system, see the 1973 Body Service Manual and, of course, the reference book for this session. Thank you.